Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Uh, God is just so good, and, and uh, I'm seeing a lot of answers to prayer. And so I want to just invite you, if you want someone to pray for you, if you want to be prayed for, make a prayer request. Ask questions. Get involved. Help us out. Like, share. Get the gospel message out there. And, and uh, don't be afraid to be vulnerable in front of your other fellow believers. I know a lot of us have been burned. But let's think about the way we treated Christ. We have a tendency to do that to, to ourselves. We, we get hurt, and so we isolate ourselves. So I just want to share with you and invite you to, don't be, to not be afraid of being vulnerable. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and get right into the Word. We're in Luke chapter 9. Uh, last, or sorry, Luke chapter 13. <laughs> we're going to start with verse 6. And this is called the parable of the barren fig tree. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I've come seeking fruit for this fig tree. And I've found none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and put on manure. Then it should bear fruit next year. Well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. Why did Jesus tell this story? Well, the previous chapter he was talking about uh, bearing fruit in accordance with repentance. Repent or perish. Now he's speaking to those who are planted in the vineyard. And I'm going to tell you, he's speaking to you and I. We are planted in God's garden. Jesus talked about this in Luke chapter or sorry, John chapter 14 said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And he says, any branch that does not bear fruit will be cut away and thrown into the fire. Jesus warns us of these things because he expects us to bear fruit. He expects us to. And if not, we're going to be tossed into the fire. If we do not bear fruit in accordance with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we need to be able to share that gospel. Too many of us now are so worried about offending people. We're so worried about hurting people's feelings. We're so worried about, we are becoming useless to the gospel of the kingdom because we are not preaching the gospel. That is not just simply the job of a preacher. It is the job of everybody who is called according to the purpose of Christ. If you are called by Christ, you are expected to bear fruit. James put it this way, faith without works is dead. It all fits together. If we do not bear fruit for the gospel, if we do not bear fruit for the kingdom, if we are not sharing what Christ has done for us, we're useless to the kingdom. It's plain and simple. There's no way around it. And so I'm going to speak to you on that behalf. I'm going to ask you, Focus on what God is calling you to. You're not called to be a preacher, perhaps. Some of you might be. You're not called to teach Sunday school. Some of you might be. You may not be called uh, to do things, but you have a gift. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 speaks of this. You know, the eye cannot say because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. You know, and, and even the parts, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that are not given the honor of the visible parts, the ones that are covered. And he's not speaking simply of the, the naughty bits. He's talking of, of our bones and our organs and our, our blood vessels and things like that. Things that aren't exactly visible. They have a plan and a purpose and a place within the body. And so, whatever your purpose is, your work, your part in the body of Christ, and yes, we have to go to church. Yes, we need to be a part of the community of Christ, which is the church. It's not the building, it's the community. We have to be a part of it. We need one another. We were built for loving God and loving others. You fulfill all the royal law by doing this. Hebrews says, do not forsake the habit of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. And it's not merely just coming on Sundays. It's visiting with one another, enjoying meals together, sitting down and being friends with one another, loving each other. Jesus said, by this they will know you are my disciples, by how you love one another. And so, bearing fruit is spreading the seed, spreading the message of the gospel, but it is also building up the body of Christ. And so, we need to love God with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And if we do not bear fruit, I hate to say it, we are going to be cut away. If we do not come to Christ 
and bear fruit for the kingdom. We are going to be cut away. You can be in the house of God. Jesus speaks to this in the Gospel of Matthew. You might recall the parable of uh, the three servants. Three servants who were in the house of the master. Each were given gifts, or excuse me, talents of gold. That is a bag of gold according to their ability. One was given five, one was given two, and another was given one. The master went away, and he returns. He returned unexpectedly, and he asked the, the, the servants to settle the accounts. You see, the way that sermon works, the way Jesus is explaining that parable, is if you are a servant in the house of the master, which if you call yourself a Christian, you are. If you are a servant in the house of the master, you are expected to have a return on the investment he has given you. And not all of us have the same amount of gifts. We don't have the same talents. We don't have the same things. But there is a return expected. Even if our return is minimal, he expects a return. Why? Because this good news of the gospel is what he died for. He died to give you freedom. He died to give you purpose. He died to give you a place within his family. And so it's our job, it is our duty, it is our right and our role to uh, fulfill our part in the body. And we're not here to go and judge the world. We are here to build up the body of Christ. So often, people know what Christians are against, but do they realize that we are for God? We are also for them. We need to love our neighbors. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 5, what do I have to do with the world? Isn't it inside the church that we have to judge? God's going to judge the outside in the church. So we've got to take care of our house too. Use your gifts to build up the body of Christ. Use your gifts to, to go out and to spread that good news message and watch how Christ does. But if you don't bear free, fruit, Jesus says here, we're going to be cut up and thrown away. I pray and I pray and I pray that you seek to submit yourself to God, get into his word, and submit yourself to his Holy Spirit, fixing your eyes on Christ, so that Christ may make you a vessel usable for the house of God. God bless you. I'll be praying for you. Get involved. Tell us what you think. Have a good day.